Boom shakalaka, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters around the world. It is your boy Chris Shul, the chocolate newbie and soul brother. How are y'all doing? I'm out here going on my daily walk. And I wanted to talk about wanted to talk about an article I recently came across. Courtesy of a friend of mine. He, sh he shared me a link to uh, a guy that used to be a vegan act activist. He, uh, he goes by, or well, at least he used to go by the title Vegan Prince. And he recently dropped veganism because he was experiencing some health issues and he's had some pretty, well, controversial things to say about veganism lately. And one of his comments was uh, really disconcerting. So in this article, he says that uh, a cow, a grass-fed cow, is the most vegan product to have in terms of food because a cow can feed someone for three months. And uh, to me, I just, I just laughed. I laughed because, I mean, from an ethical standpoint, for people that don't understand veganism, now granted, I think the definition of veganism is evolving to mean very different things. I mean, a lot of people seem to think, I, based off of what Timothy uh, said in this article, and I think a lot of people share this sentiment that veganism is about reducing harm. So if you can eat a cow and it saves people from having to starve, well, that's an acceptable form of uh, veganism. But <laughs> from an ethical standpoint, I mean, you should always be judging an action on whether it's inherently right or wrong. I mean, the idea of saying that it's okay to do something because it can potentially lead to uh, greater good in the future means you can justify anything. It's like uh, saying that you're going to kill someone. I mean, if you know that someone later on down the line may do something that's horrible, you say, hey, you're going to kill that person because they're potentially going to do something that's bad. But the point is, from an ethical standpoint, it doesn't, makes, it doesn't make much sense if you're someone that believes in the idea of veganism, which comes, I mean, a lot of people have this idea of, once again, veganism being all about reducing harm, but it actually comes from... The, the Vegetarian Society, the UK Vegetarian Society, Donald Watson used to uh, run the newsletter and he coined the term vegan to separate the non-dairy, uh, non-egg eating vegetarians from the egg and dairy eating vegetarians. And uh, the, the same attitudes, the same philosophies that were established within the Vegetarian Society were part of the vegan society back then. And vegetarianism, in case you're not aware, it comes from this giant tradition. I mean, it can be traced back to Pythagoras 2,000 years ago to the Pythagorean diet, but even further than that, to India, where uh, the giant priests 9,000 years ago, uh, they used to be this warrior class, they called the Turtankaran priests, and uh, they eventually became more meditative, more peaceful, and as they became more meditative, they dropped their violent ways and stopped uh, performing violence in all forms, they stopped harming people. And this is where the philosophy of Ahimsa comes about. Ultimately, vegetarianism, veganism comes from this attitude of himsa, which means to not harm, to do no harm. And uh, the idea of killing an animal, like the idea of causing harm, in order to bring about more good is not the basis of what we call, well, consistent moral ethics, a himsa, or any sound moral philosophy. Unless, of course, you're one of these social justice warriors that believes that you can justify an action because it may lead to the greatest amount of good. But that comes, that comes more down to people's philosophy when it comes to ethics, and I find a lot of people that have these social justice worldviews views tend to subscribe to that way of thinking. But if you're someone that believes in principled ethics, then regardless of the amount of good something is going to cause, it's wrong to do that thing. So this quote that Timothy, I, I get back to this point, this, uh, this quote of his that, a grass-fed cow is going to feed a family for three months or something like that is irrelevant. The ends don't justify the means. And even if you subscribe to this idea that it's better for the environment, because I know a lot of people do, it's not. It's not. I mean, first of all, a grass-fed cow requires about 50 acres of land. 50 acres of land that only that cow can have. So it's using a tremendous amount of resources. And if you go on Google, and you have a look at cattle ranches or the cattle farming, you see these areas that are environmentally worn out. You see the grass has been completely stripped off because it's massively damaging, massively resource intensive having these cows. 
Like the idea of saying the cows are better for the environment, grass-fed cows, is just a, it's a fallacy. So, it's just something that I wanted to uh, discuss. But more specifically, I wanted to speak about just the attitude people have towards veganism. Like, it seems to be morphing into this very different worldview. A lot of people, once again, they're focused on this idea of minimizing harm, when it really is a philosophy of principles. Like, the idea of saying, I mean, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, if, if you're someone that subscribes to this philosophy, it's based off of this idea that you think it's inherently wrong to kill these sentient beings. Period. And that's why you don't eat them. But if you want to fall into this idea of saying, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to support this industry or I'm going to kill this animal because it's going to either support something good or it's going to lead to X and Y, then you're politicizing this whole thing and you're moving into a realm of logical insanity because you can use the justification that by doing a certain action it's going to lead to good or it may lead to bad or I, I mean something that a lot of uh, anti-vegan people tend to make one of the arguments people tend to make is that for instance by having soy it's very uh, damaging towards the environment or it's doing more harm towards these animals and this is the kind of thinking that you fall into when you're making these uh, these arguments that deal more with the potential to bring about harm. I mean, the argument I often hear from people sometimes, uh, they talk about how soy essentially uh, displaces the, the food source for a lot of these animals that are dependent on, on soy. And as a result, you're actually doing more harm by having soy, right? Because these animals don't have access to the soy. And as a result, they starve and they die. And if you're looking at things along the lines of consequential ethics, the potential for something bad to arise, these are the kind of problems you fall into. So it's just something I wanted to outline. Like if you're someone that fundamentally subscribes to this idea that it's wrong to kill and eat animals, then an argument like that, that killing a cow feeds many, many families is really irrelevant. But yeah, it's just, it's frustrating to me because Timothy is someone that used to be a big proponent of veganism. Used to go by the title Vegan Prince. Not a very fitting title now, that's for sure. And uh, lately, he's taken a step back from that. He has done a, pretty much a 180. Started eating fish, started eating uh, some other animal products. Uh, and now he's gone onto the route of saying, even saying now that he wants to own what he's doing and start actually maybe killing an animal and uh, consuming it. At least this is what he says in this article. But, yeah, I just find the whole thing very disconcerting, particularly when you look at the fact that not even that long ago, maybe one or two years ago, he was saying things like, I mean, Timothy essentially uh, was someone that would talk about the health benefits of veganism, but apparently did it for ethical reasons. But he would often say that it would be a great test of your character to find out that veganism wasn't beneficial for your health and still maintain it because of because of uh, just the effort in maintaining something like that, doing something for the right reasons, not just because it's beneficial towards you. I mean, doing it because you believe that it's wrong to see these animals be at harm. And uh, <laughs> it's funny to see, you know, we skip a, a, a year or so later, now he's saying that well, you know, he's experiencing some health problems, and as a result, he's decided to drop this thing, drop this whole uh, philosophy of, I do not like the idea of killing and eating animals, purely because he's experiencing some kind of discomfort. Now, granted, look, in, to his, his credit, he's been saying that he's been trying a whole bunch of different things. He did this long water fast thing for over 30 days, I think, and uh, he's been doing a whole bunch of other extreme things to try to cure his health problems found it wasn't working, tried eating some fish, that improved his health. But I guess it's disconcerting when someone can be so vehemently opposed to the idea of killing and eating animals and then you see him doing a 180. And of course he used to have this clothing label, Ethics and Antics, and now he's had to take a step back from that organization because obviously it was all about supporting ethical clothing uh, consistent with veganism and whatnot. But anyway, um, look, 
All I want to say is I... Yeah, I... I, uh... I would like to say I, I still respect Timothy. I, I respect the fact that he did a lot for veganism, promoted a lot of great ideas through his channel. But uh, yeah, people are human. Timothy the human often refers to himself as that. And people err, people fall back, they fall away side. Progress isn't always forward. Sometimes people uh, <laughs> make some uh, silly arguments and uh, I think it's good when people hold you accountable to it. So I kind of just wanted to make a video discussing that. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about Timothy's quotes, Timothy's recent statements, rather. This is the uh, esoteric noetic, the real vegan prince. That's me, yo. Chocolate Nubian prince over here with my big guns. Check this out. Boom. Oh, look at me. Uh, uh, uh. Damn, that's what I'm talking about. Boom, shakalaka. You know what it is. You know what it is. Yeah. Ethical gains, man. None of this freaking flimsy Timothy sheep. Vegan Prince nonsense. It's the real deal. Suya Namaskar Namaste. Peace out. Peace be upon your butt cheeks. Peace in the Middle East. Signing out. Chris Shule.